Is a double wishbone setup really better than a McPherson? Then why does the Porsche 911 still use a McPherson suspension? Today, let's go through the full installation process of a regular McPherson system and see how it works. First, the subframe with its lower control arms is mounted on the tray. Then, the engine and transmission are set in place on top of it. Next, the half shafts connect to the wheel hubs, while the stopper washers are linked to the lower control arms. These lower arms are responsible for managing both the forward and sideways forces acting on the car. After that, the steering tie rods and stabilizer bar are installed. The stabilizer bar keeps the body stable through turns, preventing excessive body roll. Then the main center bolt, along with the tie rod and stabilizer nuts, are put in by hand. Except for the stabilizer bar, the other five bolts are tightened using a five-axis torque machine that costs about as much as an Audi. Now a double wishbone suspension is basically an evolved version of the McPherson. It adds an upper control arm which strengthens side support and lowers the overall suspension height. That's why it offers much sharper handling than a typical McPherson setup. But there's a saying, performance is 30% materials and 70% tuning, so even a double wishbone suspension can feel dull if it's not tuned right. The McPherson used in the Porsche 911 is actually very different from the one we just saw. So, what kind of suspension does your car have? 